Hi everybody, this is Ryan Wilson. I'm going to show you how to animate your grid in Cinema 4D. So I'm going to start off here with a Illustrator file. This would be a sample of what your grid might look like. Let's take a look at the size of our artboard. We're working with uh, 4 inches by 4 inches here, square. So you'll need to pay attention to what your width and height is of your grid when you're doing this. So let's... Uh, this, you don't have to do this step, but this will make it easier to see in Cinema 4D. I'm going to make my grid lines red. And then we're going to go to File, Save for Web. And we're going to save out as a JPEG. And I'll just save that to the desktop here. Okay, and we'll hide Illustrator. Okay, so now I'm going to open up Cinema 4D and I'm going to go to the top view by hitting F2 and I'm going to make a plane notice my plane is square as well for math purposes we'll make this 200 inches by 200 inches I'm going to double click down here in my materials layer to make a new material double click that material to open it up go to this little triangle well, with color highlighted go to this little triangle beside texture and click load image and we're going to navigate out to our desktop and select that grid example jpeg for the purposes of this say no you don't want to copy it to the project location uh, typically you would always copy this to your text file before importing and you can see the texture here applied to the sphere so we're going to close this and then we're going to drag this material up here to our object manager and drop it on plane now you don't see anything here because my display is set to lines we're going to change this to Gorard shading now you will be able to move this plane around which we don't want to happen so to lock it down we're going to click on plane in the object manager right click go down to or I'm sorry go to cinema 4d tags and go to protection so now you'll be able to select your plane but you won't be able to move it it's kinda of locking a layer all right, so the next thing we want to do is we want to go into our spline tools and we're going to grab a linear spline and we're just going to trace out our grid. So there's one grid line. Let me turn this off. Well, I guess it didn't work. click once let go and click again so we should have a spline here there we go so I'm going to then create a rectangle oh. delete that let's back out hitting F1 going to perspective mode going to create a rectangle and we're going to scale it down in our coordinates manager to five inches by five inches let's go smaller than that let's go two by two okay and then go to your hyper nerbs and grab a sweep nerbs and then grab your spline and rectangle in your object manager and drag them up into the sweep nerb and so if you can see here we now have a sweeped line which we can animate we're not going to do that quite yet so let's twirl that uh, minus sign down and we're going to name this uh, LR-01 LR for left to right and we're going to go back into our top view by hitting F2 
So if you grab that layer and while holding the control button and dragging, make another one. We'll scroll that, slide that down into position. Duplicate that again. You could also select all three of these now and control drag. And we just need one, two, three, four more. So I'm going to select those four, control drag, move them down into position here. So then I'm going to go back and I'm going to name these so that they're in order. This will help us when we copy them here in a second. Okay, so then I'm going to select all of the LR dashes and hold control down and drag. So we're going to get another full set of copies. With these selected, I'm going to hit the R key to rotate and drag this green circle here and then hold shift and it's going to shift them by 10 degrees until we get to 90 and I'm going to hit E to get back to my move tool and we're going to move that into position so we've got our grid basically done. Let's take a look at it in perspective view, see how it looks. Not bad. So we'll go back, hit F2, and go back into the top view. And this time we're going to grab a circle. And let's click on the circle here and go to basic. Use color on. This is just so that we can see it here while we're drawing this easier. Maybe that won't work. Ah, because it's selected. So there's color. Okay. Well, we'll try to do the best we can here to line up over our circle. And then we're going to do the same thing. Go into perspective view. Create a rectangle. Two by two. Go into our nerbs, grab another sweep nerb, select circle and rectangle and drag it up into the sweep nerbs. And there we've got our circle. Hit F2 to go back into perspective mode. Click on the sweep nerb, control drag. Let's clean these up a little bit. Let's call this large circle. And we'll call this one small circle, which will be once we scale it down. And we'll go ahead and change these. These are top bottom lines. Okay, so going back to our small circle, we're going to twirl the plus down, highlight the circle, and we're going to go into change the radius here, and I'm going to click and drag on um, the up and down arrows and drag it until it's just the right size. That looks like it's about it there. We could click up and down to see how that works. Let's see. 32, 33. Just about right. Okay, so we're going to hit F1 to get back out to the perspective mode to check it. So now we're done with this plane. 
which we had our grid superimposed on. So we can go ahead and delete that. And so now we just have our grid. So we're going to go up into layout, animation, and on each of the sweep nerbs we have the end growth property. So at zero, this is for the large circle, if you can see in the view area, zero, and there's a hundred. So we're going to animate that. So at zero, let's select all of our sweep nerbs. Control click on the gray circle beside end growth and scroll that down to zero. Control click on the circle again so it's red. Move forward to about 60 frames. Change end growth to 100%. Control click on the circle so it's red. And then we'll back up in our timeline and we'll play it out. So as you can see up here that the grid is now growing or animating into place. So what else can we do here? Let's go, let's take a look at 60. And with our move tool, we'll move it up here a little bit. And let's put a light down. And we'll put the light above it. We'll go to the light general principles and go to shadow and select soft. Let's see what that looks like. All right, let's put a floor down. There we go. So now our grid is reflecting onto the floor. That's kind of a neat effect. I don't know if you would use that or not. But there you go. Hope that helps.